This is a podcast by Wellhouse Church, where we talk about what it's like to be a Christian Monday through Saturday, to live as a person of faith in a culture against faith. So, let's talk about self-care. Let's do it. Um, but, first, happy birthday, Wellhouse. As of yesterday. As of yesterday, one year. <laughs> one year. We hit one year yesterday. And it's super exciting. It is. And we launched our merch line yesterday. We did. Wellhouse Marketplace on the website. Link down below. Yep. Um, and we're super excited. Um, it is literally a dream come true. It really is. We had, as, as you guys know, when we talked about it in our deconstruction episodes... Um, we had been talking about Wellhouse for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had I I first had I had my first conversation with Ben Blackwell about planning a church in 2013. Yeah, and then you and I had started having conversations about a year or two before that. Yep. Um, before we actually launched, and yeah, about a year or two before we launched. Yeah. Um, and then here we are now. Yep. This is our baby. This is our dream. And we're so excited. We're so happy. And we could not thank you guys enough. Mm -hmm. Because as Cohen said yesterday on A Closer Look, we both work day jobs. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, This is not our main source of income. No, we Um, do this because we love it. And that's right. We were, I mean, getting so discouraged. We were. Just the growth that's happened over the last month and started trending up and is trending up is insane. It's incredible. Um, and, um, so we just wanted to say thank you. Absolutely. To you guys and say how much we love y'all. Um, and that this, none of this would be possible without you. Nope. None of it. So how was your day? I had a good day. I mean, obviously I deal with, trauma stuff day, daily sure but overall i had a good day it's good yeah I, I had a real good day it's good how was yours um mine was good as well um i wouldn't say that i've been dealing with trauma stuff but i've been dealing with things stuff that are yeah they're hard yeah um but today was also a good day good um i got to go to my field placement and and do some, and actually apply some of the the things that I've been learning, and you know, for the last three years. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so it it was it's that was a good day. Good. Um. <clears throat> well, I'll be honest. I actually am excited to learn from you tonight about <laughs> building a self care plan. So I'm not gonna lie. When I was building this episode out, I was like. Okay. Um, I'm not doing any of these things. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I ain't doing a single one of them. And then on the day that we're recording this, the episode on practicing presence uh, from the rule of life about play com- came out. Yeah. And when you're recording the content, it's one thing. Yeah. When you go back and re-listen to it, it's a different thing. Yeah. I was yesterday outlining this. And feeling like really convicted. And then I listened to the episode on Price and Presence about play. Again, feeling very convicted. Yeah. Dude, you need to chill. <laughs> he's, um, he's wound like a top tonight. Um, when I was doing all my research yesterday um, about self-care and building a self-care plan, I came across a, um, okay, you're going down. I came across this resource that is linked down below. It's a template for a self-care plan, but in it has a link to an assessment, a stress assessment. And I was like, well, I'm curious. And I took it. It put me in the highest percentile. Dang. Um, I don't even want to take it then. 
I know where I'm at. <laughs> the results told me. And these assessments, there's some variability there, right? They're not always one-to-one. Yeah. It's just a good starting place. Yeah. It told me that there's an 80% chance I'm going to have a mental or physical breakdown in the next two years. Dang. That's deep, yo. Um, yeah. That, like, yeah, that got real, real fast. I, whenever I saw my results... My heart fell into my stomach. Yeah. Um, and I realized how much I need self-care. Yeah. Um, and also, a part of that, how much I need to go back to counseling. Um, I feel that. To I learn see, yeah. how to manage stress a little bit better. Yeah. I feel all that. So, um, this is coming from a guy who also needs to practice self-care more. So you should listen to me. (laughs) (laughs) Do Um, as I say, not as I do. (laughs) No, you should listen to me because this, these are things that this is research that was really impactful for me. Yeah. That's why you should listen. Yeah. Um, I need to listen because I know I don't do a good job of self-care. So a overview definition of self-care is things that you do to, quote, maintain and enhance your short and long-term physical and emotional health. Mm -hmm. Um, That seems self-explanatory after I read it. But whenever I read that, I was like, huh. I guess that is what self-care is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You talk about self-care as this general abstract idea of things that you do for yourself. Right. No, there's a goal in place. There is a goal to protect and enhance your physical and mental health. Yeah. Um, It's not coming home and flipping on the TV. Maybe that's a part of it, but that can't be all that it is. Right. The goals of mental health, which is why I went there. Is taking care of psycholo- or physical and psychological self, mm-hmm. right? Getting the help that you need. That means going for regular checkups. I'm not good about that. I know you're not either. I, know, I haven't I been a doctor in forever. I hate going to the doctor. I know. Me too. I had to go a few weeks ago. I hate it. What would you have to go to the doctor for? A, a staph infection. Oh, that's right. Um, I hate going to the doctor. And also... Counseling and therapy, yeah, if needed. Um, taking care. So, like, if we're talking about Maslow, your whole basic self. needs yep. first. Yep. Your body and your mind have to be solid. Yep. Um, managing and reducing stress. Um. That also seems obvious. Recognizing emotional and spiritual needs. Mm. So I know that Cullen is not a big fan of the love language thing. Um, and so we're not going to talk a whole, whole lot about it. But um, that is one way. If, if you're on board with the love language thing, that is one way for you to understand your emotional needs. So like from your family, your friends, your partner, the relationships that you have, the way that you receive love is a way of understanding your emotional needs. Um, also, that goes a little bit deeper. That's just one way, right? Um, that's just an example. But your spiritual needs, that is talk, that can go so many different ways. Yeah. Um, hey, go listen to Practicing Presence. <laughs> yeah. Um, we talk, that is literally that's what the, Practicing Presence is. That's exists the only for. conversation that exists on Practicing Presence is one of spiritual formation. Understanding your own spiritual needs and mm-hmm. how to meet them. Yeah. And different ways of understanding your spiritual needs. Yep. Um, 
and so for us as Christians, that's the perspective we take. Um, and so that's what you should walk away with. Yeah. Um, and there is a ton of resources out there that we can give you for understanding your spiritual needs and how to meet them. Yeah. Um, and understanding your emotional needs can also come through therapy as well. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and so, and also your Enneagram type. Um, yeah, I think that, I think the Enneagram thing is really helpful actually. Um, because it's a personality thing designed to help you better understand yourself. Yeah. And if you begin to understand yourself, you begin to understand your emotional needs. And I think, he said, there's been like one or two books written on the love language. There's been, like, there's been quite a few. Nah, there's not near as many as been written on the Enneagram. No, not as many big ones. And um, I just think that the Enneagram is a much more tried and true way of understanding self. Sure. Um, and in understanding self, you do understand your emotional needs. You understand why you do the things you do, why the you get stressed over the things you get stressed. Sure. You understand yourself much more inside and out, which makes it easier for you to care for yourself inside and out. But I will say that as a six... I never would have gotten to my love language being words of affirmation unless somebody had handed that to me. Hmm. Unless I had been taking a test and seen that. And then after I saw that, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not ready to throw out the love language thing to understand emotional needs. And yeah, there's probably a little bit of a bias here for me because yeah. um, it has proven to work for me yeah and see mine's the other way it, it didn't prove to work for me because right. mine changed and and that's true sometimes they do change your love languages do change and the people in your lives love languages change but if they're an emotionally aware enough person if you're an emotionally aware enough person you will see that change yeah. and you will see your emotional needs change fair and also how to communicate them fair. um <clears throat> so Next, fostering and sustaining relationships is the goal, is one of the goals of self-care. Mm. I get that. If you cannot maintain a healthy relationship with anybody in your life, you're not practicing enough self-care. Yeah. It's that whole deal about putting your mask on yeah. first before you can help somebody else put their mask on. Yep. You need to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. Yeah. That is where you and I fall. Yeah. We put so much into Wellhouse. Yeah. And for and our other relationships and for me I put so much into my field placement too, pouring out to other people, pouring out to clients and, and our residents. Yeah, um, well, and that's the deal. I mean, both of us are other like some of our other things like my quote unquote day job. Mm, oh yeah. I work at a law firm. Law I mean, firm. these family uh, law. There are very few people. There are very few clients we have that are not going through some experience of trauma, and and you find yourself pouring out to help them, to be present with them. Yeah. And you're not taking care of yourself. Nope. Therefore, you cannot maintain healthy relationships if you are not taking care of yourself at a fundamental level. Yep. And all of this can kind of be wrapped up into one little bow of finding balance in life. Mm. And in my notes, I have asterisks around balance. Yeah. Because balance is different for everyone. Mm -hmm. And what that balance looks like is dependent on your own situation. In social work, we talk about the individual being in the driver's seat. Yeah. We talk about um, the self-determination of the human being. And we talk about you being your own expert. You are the only person that knows the proper balance for your life. And the only way that you get there is if you start practicing self-care. Yeah. It's going to take some time, but you got to start at the basics. The only way you find your own balance is starting at the basics 
I've yeah. taken care of these things that we just talked about, and I'm going to give you some categories and some different ways to do that and give you some examples later. But you start with the basics. And then you move forward from that. And then you find what works for you. Um, <clears throat> so a little place for you to begin is to create a note list. Um, Did you say no or note? No. No. Like N-O. Okay. Things you know you don't like or that you no longer want to do. Ooh. Things you know you don't like or you no longer want to do. The things that are no for you. If you're an alcoholic, a no as alcohol. If you want to quit smoking, no or cigarettes. Um, start with a no list. Um, and then work from there. Um, strive for a nutritious, healthy diet, right? Try to eat as healthy as you can. Um, sleeping seven to eight hours. <sighs> you lost me, man. You got to try. Seven to eight hours. I am trying, but it's like and next to This is impossible. a starting place, right? Like, and, and you can mix and match these things to fit you, like all yeah. these sorts of things. It's not like this is a checklist that you have to meet all these things. Would yeah. it be cool if you could? Sure. Yeah. But like, that's unrealistic. Don't put that on yourself. Um, exercise. Yep. Uh, routine medical attention or medical care. Going to the doctor. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. I'm terrible at that one. Relax section, relaxation exercises, like meditation. Okay. So I get that. I wish I was more consistent with meditating. I've been trying. When I meditate, I'm always like, oh my God, that's amazing. Yep. Why don't I do that more? But then you just like, you get busy. <laughs> For me, I use biblical meditation. Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, what's the name of the podcast? There's a podcast on Spotify that I listen to fairly regular Bible meditation podcast. That's literally what it's called. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, Nikki Ratch, um, go look it up. It's pretty cool. They do audio Divina and, oh, nice. And it's, it's literally somewhere between seven to 10 minutes of biblical meditation. It's fantastic. Nice. I always come out of it feeling relaxed, yeah. stress-free, and getting some sort of biblical interpretation that I got to on my own. Yeah. <laughs> or with the help of the Spirit, right? Yeah. But like, um, very helpful. And as a re relaxation med like exercise, um, spend enough time with your loved ones. Mm. Hanging out with the people that you care about. Yeah. Your fan, your friends, your family. Um, that's a big deal. And is very important. Do at least one act of relaxa relaxing um, activity a day. Whether that's reading a book, watching TV, smoking a cigar with a whiskey, or whatever your thing is whether it's knitting or, I don't know, playing golf, what have you, some sort of relaxing exercise or activity every day. Yeah. At least one for at least 30 minutes. Mm. There has to be a timeline on it. At least 30 minutes. Now, also, find balance. Don't spend too much time there. Yeah, yeah. Um, do at least one pleasurable activity every day. Cooking. Hanging out with your friends, right? Um, for me, making cocktails, right? Um, playing music. Watching football. Watching football. Um, and that could also be playing golf, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, look for opportunities to laugh. Yeah. How important. So a big part of my self-care is comedy. Mine too. 
I love comedy. I love stand up. I follow like three or four different stand up comedians. I follow three or four different stand up uh, comedy pages. I love comedy. My favorite TV show is Friends. Right below it is How I Met Your Mother. Comedy is a big part of my life. Yep, mine too. And I find so much healing and wholeness in comedy. Yeah. Just because it's an opportunity to laugh. It is. And I I find myself even sometimes like just at my wits end and I'm like, I got to watch some comedy. Yep. Like I got to, I got to watch some stand up. I need, I need some laughter in my life right now. Yep. And there are several categories for self care. And these are kind of variable depending on the resource you're looking at. But this is the one that I think I'm going to use because it's all encompassing. And so you need to look at this for yourself and figure out what this means for you. You are your own expert. You're the only one that can build your own self-care plan. Yeah. Just like on Practicing Presence, you're the only one who can write your own rule of life. Yep. Intellectual. Emotional. Environmental. Physical. Spiritual. Financial. Community. And occupational. It's very similar to a rule of life. It is very similar. So remember on the first episode of yeah. the rule of life, I said, that's very, like, it seems yeah. like a self-care plan. Yep, you did. Um, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so if you're looking for a little bit more insight on how to build a self-care plan, um, maybe go and catch up on practicing presence. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it'll help you a little bit. Um, but. For the last time in our mental health series of giving a biblical implication of self-care, of, of something related to mental health, I think this is the best one. And this is the only one that is directly related to scripture narratively. We see self-care all the way through scripture. Or at least up till the gospels and some in Paul. At first, in the garden, there was peace, right? And you find this place of relaxation, but also a balance and work. Mm -hmm. Then sin happens, and there's some hoopla. And then we get the Levitical law, which tells you to work, which tells you to do certain things. But, Make time for Sabbath. There is designation for caring for yourself and eating healthy, eating a certain way, and working, which was also a form of exercise, mm-hmm. um, sleeping, mm-hmm. and taking time to relax on Sabbath. Um. And then we move into Jesus. He's your better example. I, I'm I'm walking yeah. this through narratively. Okay. Then we get to Jesus. And we see all these same things that we see in Levitical law, except we actually physically see Jesus do work and leave and go and care for himself. Yeah, that's the deal. That I think in today's world, we're so afraid of offending anyone. But that's why Jesus, the narrative of Jesus is so powerful when it says, and he withdrew away yeah. to be alone and pray. He went by himself. To care for himself. To care for himself. And we also see lots of times him encouraging his disciples to do the same thing, mm-hmm. to care for themselves, to stop, take a break. There, there's one time, I don't remember exactly where, that we see the gospel writer um, say that the disciples didn't even have time to stop and eat. Yep. And Jesus says, take a break. Yep. Care for yourself. This is a thing 
that God has set up for us. We have language for it now in calling it self-care. But this is a thing that God has created for us. And as we talk about in the Rule of Life episodes, is a part of your divine nature. Caring for the image of God that lives within you. So, listener, as we wrap up all of this talk about mental health and mental health challenges, no matter your situation, no matter where you come from, what mental health challenge you struggle with, what traumas you have, what stress you face. One, there's a God who loves you. Two, there are resources for you. And there are resources down below, again, for to help you build out a self-care plan. And every one of you, Every one of you, no matter your situation, I encourage you, I implore you, build a self-care plan and stick to it. Now, it's not to say that that's not going to change. But caring for yourself, caring for the image of God within you is what helps make you a healthy functioning human being and I'm guilty of not being that myself Cullen's guilty of not doing that (laughs) we as people just find ourselves in a place where we go 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 and do 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 and we pour so much out of ourselves that we end up pouring out of an empty cup yep 100% you have to refill You have to recharge. And how you do that is self-care. 